everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this Monday, February 4th. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. Did you have a good weekend? I did, and we should tell the viewers, full disclosure, Courtney and I almost missed the show today. I mean, it happened. We <laughs> we were upstairs <laughs> in our office, and we were just chatting and we were catching up. Yeah. It's funny, the weekend did feel like it took forever. I think it's because I missed you so much. I missed you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was a good weekend, but glad to be back at work and glad we did not miss the show here at one o'clock. <sighs> you know, before, when we worked at the mall, we had like major deadlines, right? Because we'd have to get in our car, drive to the physically mall, go physically somewhere. go there. So here sometimes, you know, we get caught up in the workday. But in any case, we're glad to be with you, glad you're with us, and it's gonna be a great day here. Absolutely, you know, I was kind of battling a little bit of like a scratchy throat, kind of a, I could feel a cold coming on. And so I've been doing this like homeopathic, because you know there's no cure for the common codes. So I've been like dissolving these tablets under my tongue what for kind like of three tablets? days. I don't even know the name of it, but it seems to be working. However, I did buy this throat spray that's up on my desk right now, so I didn't even bring it down, but I've been doing it wrong all these years. You know this, the throat spray when you have a sore throat? Have you, you been putting it on as cologne instead? Totally. No, I spray it, but then like I go to bed or you know, you swallow whatever is, I don't know, you just carry on. You're supposed to spit it out. Ooh. I know. You are? It says on the direct, I guess I've never read the directions before. <laughs> that like chloroseptic spray. Anybody Didn't it make else? your stomach Anybody sick? Anybody else spit it out? No. no, not a one. I mean, it's the weirdest thing. So now I feel like I'm well versed in the throat spray. You never know, did that before. When I was a kid, I was five years old and I was at the dentist and they gave me the fluoride to swish. Well, nobody ever told me I was supposed to spit it out. I was five. So what did I do? No. Oh, I drank it. Oh. Yes, I thought it was juice. She, she came by the hygienist, she's like, here you Here's go. Here's your shot. And I was like, what a <laughs> lovely glass of blue juice. Thank you so much. I drank it. Oh my gosh, I You didn't up. swish? You just drank it? I drank it. I, d I was five. I know. I didn't know what you it was. You know what, it was bad, poor directions Oh, by I was that throwing person. up for a long time. Really? Oh yeah, it was, it was a bad scene. But you know let's what's not a talk good about scene? that. <laughs> we always go off on these tangents. You want a little something? I want a little something. And so if you could see the logo on these cups, it actually has the Arboretum logo, which I think is very interesting. Courtney, what's that all about? So I'm gonna, so yes, this is the Arboretum. And I believe this is a St. Arnold's beer. It's the Orange Show, is that right? Yes, show. I'm gonna take this over. You like that, so I'm Arboretum, gonna hand it over to you. by the way, is one of the gems of our city. Cheers. So I love the Houston Arboretum. Did you know, there's so many great facts about the Arboretum that we're gonna share with you a little bit, little bit later on in the show. But if you're looking for like a cool place to spend for Valentine's Day, maybe a great date night out, also helping a nonprofit, um, the Arboretum is the place to go because you can go on the trail, have yourself a beer or some wine. Wait, you can go on a food. nature walk with this? It's called Tapas on the Trails. We're gonna have a full story coming mm. up, but it's so fantastic. Really, it's one of these like do not miss, and the price per ticket is unbelievable. It's so affordable, and it's a great date night. What a special thing to yeah. do. You know what surprises me? Because so many Houstonians, I mean, obviously the city is very, very big, but the Arboretum, if you're not familiar, it's right there on the West West Loop, 610, right near I-10. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's this perfect little oasis in the city. You know, we think of Houston and lots of like freeways and buildings and all of that, but it's this great little gem right there. It's so awesome. Yeah. And renovations happening, and there's so many great things happening on the grounds there. We're gonna take you there. We're gonna talk more about the event coming up but okay. first are you mr sexy clearly is it you? not clearly, clearly not clearly you are okay see this photo this is of a license plate you can see it there on your full, full screen so this was up in canada and a 17 year old was arrested for driving around 17 <laughs> yes a maserati with the plates that read mr sexy so the police found the plates to be unlawfully attached to this Maserati. Maserati. And the, anyway, so they, there's been this Twitter campaign to try to find the rightful owner of this Mr. Sexy license plate. Would you ever put that on your license plate? Who's buying that? Plate? I, well, I wouldn't, but I mean, who's buying it? If I saw that license plate on the freeway, I'd probably like speed up to, no, actually you're not that I, sexy. You know what? I have an issue with vanity plates anyway. I think it makes you more of a target. Right? Totally. I think so too, I don't know. I mean, maybe we're, I don't know. Yeah. I don't get the vanity plate. It's sort of like putting bells and whistles on your car, like, look at me, <laughs> I don't know, right? 
That's no? why you, you took those rocket boosters off the sides of your car. <laughs> yes. By the way, speaking of cars uh, and driving under the influence, you hear about this lady in Connecticut. The Connecticut Post reported this woman was pulled over for drunk driving, but guess what made her drunk, folks? What? Vanilla extract. No, like the what you bake with? Yes, yeah, so they, they pulled her over and they, they smelled something a little sweet, sweet on her breath, and it turns out Oh. She had gotten drunk on vanilla extract. Like the, al the alcohol content is that high? Okay, so in order for it to qualify, according to the FDA, the regulations, vanilla extract has to contain at least 35% alcohol, which makes oh, it 70 proof. Word. 70 proof. So if you're drinking vanilla extract, don't try this at home, people. No. You know Mostly what? I have the so bourbon. Right I have bourbon vanilla extract. And now it's all like ringing. I didn't think like, I got it from Trader Joe's. What do you mean it's ringing a bell? It's alcohol. Right, but I didn't realize, like I'm not thinking, it's sort of like mouthwash, right? You're not really thinking like <laughs> this is. You would drink it. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're five. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess you could pour a shot of vanilla and drink it out of oh, a glass. That poor but lady. you know in Madagascar where a lot of the vanilla comes from, there's a vanilla shortage, so it's very expensive. It used yeah. to be, I mean, if you just a little bottle of vanilla can be like 35 How bucks. How much did she have to drink for I that? Know, she Damn. must be a rich lady. That's expensive. It is expensive. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Oh, what a downer. But we're all desperate Cheers. once in a while. <laughs> I've told you so many times, I drink out of the toilet at home sometimes when we're out of wine, so. Oh, still to come on today's show, set the table in style this Valentine's Day. Look at this. Our friend Sarah Terezinski, she is back with a DIY tablescape that the entire family can help create. This is so cute. What it's a fun, fun Valentine's family festive. dinner. It's Can't wait for this. Also, folks, like it or not, it's that time of year again, Ugh. tax time. If you're expecting a refund, we're going to share five smart ways you can use that extra cash in today's Shakiba report. And Courtney, no, it's not to buy shoes. Well, sometimes, no? No? Okay. But first, coming up after the break, KPRC is telling unique stories of Texas in a whole new way. We're going to take you behind the scenes of The Eyes of Texas, the podcast with Brandon Walker, from the equipment used to some of his favorite moments so far. Well, for 30 years on KPRC, there was one show that celebrated the people, places, and many things that make Texas, Texas. Oh, I love seeing all this old video. That show, Eyes of Texas, was started by KPRC's first news director, Ray Miller, and then host Ron Stone continued that journey. It was a program that gave way to countless memorable episodes and even multiple travel guides as well. That's right. Recently, 50 years after it first launched on TV, the Eyes of Texas was brought back in a whole new, exciting way. And Brandon. Hi there, I'm Brandon Walker, your host for this new adventure, the Eyes of Texas podcast. Culturally, we celebrate Day of the Dead. We'll give you tales that are fun, quirky too. How is that accepted as normal to see a, a guy with a cage on the back of his truck with a lion in it? That is not unusual down here. <laughs> you can call it a new chapter of a show that helped define our culture. We don't do that though here from the audio booth. We hit the road, bringing you unbelievable stories. That was my 21st birthday. I was literally on the stage performing Deja Vu with Beyonce. And my favorite, stories we hope will inspire. All these people that I help out on the streets, they come to me like family. It's your state, your stories, your podcast. We sure do hope you come along with us as we go travel in Texas once more, right here on the Eyes of Texas. Oh, quite honestly, true journalism. Brandon mm -hmm. is joining us now, and uh, the first season is out. The stories from West Texas, North Texas, Central Texas, much more. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Thank you guys for having me. You know, what an unbelievable project. I mean, when I heard that you were taking this on, I thought, what a better, there's really no better person in this building to do it. Your voice is captivating. I love hearing your stories. You're such a great storyteller. Kid I bought at Target. You no, know, but you know what I mean? You're taking it back to let us listen. That's what I love about podcasts is mm -hmm. that it, it creates that vision in your head. And whether these are stories that we don't remember or can remember where we were in this place and time, what was that like for you to be like, Brandon, you're getting this assignment. 
and we want you to do it. So, funny story, I thought about possibly pitching the prospect of bringing back the eyes of Texas. I didn't have to because I was out on another story. Um, our news director, Dave Strickland, and Jerry Martin happened to be there for a separate affair, and they, they, they walked up to me, and, and Jerry asked, hey, Brandon, do you like podcasts? And I happened to like them, and I said, yeah, sure. And so then Jerry looks at Dave, and he goes, see, Brandon can do the podcast. And so then a couple days later, I think, they approached me about what they wanted to do, which was merely an idea. And so then we had to start, well, you know, what's a podcast produced by a bunch of TV folk? Right. Yeah. Good question. Right. And for folks who aren't familiar, I mean, obviously, your job every day on live TV when you're out covering a story, typically you tell that story in like 90 seconds, right? right. Mm -hmm. So the podcast really gives you a chance to get into some of these issues. And I know on the website, there's a broad range of stories, right. but what have you found have been the stories that have gotten like the most commenting and interaction online? Sure, so we've had a few stories. We're wrapping up season one right now. You're taking a look at the website uh, with the stories that we've produced. There Are Good Steeds was actually one of my favorite stories that uh, we produced back in November. Um, but we started by taking a look at uh, uh, the, the Santa Fe tragedy and how folks were looking to heal through art. Um, we launched with two episodes. The second episode was a story about uh, Hurricane Ike in the Bolivar Peninsula oh, and this wow. guy who had this farm, this exotic animal zoo, more or less and the storm came he got most of the animals out except for his pet lion and his pet tiger and so the tiger wouldn't leave uh, the lion journeyed with him to this church atop a hill in Bolivar and that's where they rode out the storm Whoa. we're looking at uh, some of the artwork for that episode right now and it was really unique because there are so many stories about Bolivar Peninsula and it's changed so much since Hurricane Ike mm -hmm. despite this guy being a matter of local lore not too many people know about him and his very unique story some 10 years later. It's so fantastic, and I was here during Ike, and I remember uh, hearing, I wasn't on the peninsula during that time, but it's such a fascinating story and to go back mm -hmm. into that and let these stories breathe, as you were alluding to. It's not, you know, you're letting it kind of pause and right. your voice just takes it all away. I mean, Thank it's you. a perfect fit. It's, you know, it's fun to learn how to, uh, tailor your writing in a way that's most effective for this particular medium. Uh, oftentimes when you've got those 90 minutes, as you mentioned, uh, you don't have much time to, to delve into that. And some of our stories and some of our topics allow us to do that too. Okay, you did uh, a story or a podcast about something called The Body Farm. Yeah. I think we have a little clip of this. Journey to the hill country and you'll find mile upon mile of ranches. Texas, right? But along County Road 213 in San Marcos, there's one ranch where the sights don't quite evoke feelings of a fresh start. It takes a long time for the, the scalpel material to break down. Welcome to the body farm where crops of corpses lay about. For the last five years or so, we've been right at about 70 or 80 donations a year. We travel to this unique classroom why people are signing up to go there when they die. Probably over 500 people that are signed up. Body Farm on the Eyes of Texas podcast. Uh, uh, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Same I'm reaction. Speechless. <laughs> yeah, you get there, and then the scent is the first thing that greets you. That hits you. you. Yeah, you know, hello. It's humidity. Or goodbye. Right. Yeah. My Good goodness. Ridden. There's lots of lots of unexpected twists and turns. And what's great too, you actually feature a performer mm -hmm. uh, who's actually going to be performing right. later today on Just right. Mike. Yeah, right. Bertani. Yeah, Bertani Washington. She's got such an interesting story. There she is. There we. Uh, uh, spent some time with her at Sugar Hill Studios as she oh, was yeah. recording uh, her album from Port Arthur originally. And Port Arthur has such a rich story, of course, oil, but also with music. And her, she comes from a family of singers. And we just tell that larger story about how she's here with us today. Such a great story. And we're out of time, but you got to come back and look at this setup. I mean, yeah, I have I've never seen the podcast. Yeah, that's so cool. Thanks it's for sharing It's just me out there. Thanks for having me. At some point, yeah. maybe you could teach us how to use this, Brandon. If only I could teach myself. <laughs> You're doing it right. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Brandon Walker, so thank you, you so much for thank stopping you. by. And a reminder, the Eyes of Texas podcast is available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, a whole lot more. Subscribe so you can catch up on the first season, That Body Farm. you got to watch that one. And be the first to hear the next rounds of great stories when they are released later on this year. All right, after the break, if you like to do Valentine's Day dinner with the entire family, well, we have ideas to get the little ones involved. That's up next.
All right, for those of you with families, Valentine's Day might be about staying in and celebrating with the spouse and the kids. We've done it here with some fun ways to get the kids involved. Putting together the dinner table is upcycling expert Sarah Terezinski. Welcome back. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is so cute. Is I'm so fun? like I love Valentine's Day and Easter because of the colors. Yes. Yeah. So I get like involved immediately. But it's perfect because yes. Valentine's Day isn't during the week, right? It is during the week, and you know it's an expensive holiday. It sure is. And you know usually it's like the couple thing going, but once you have kids. We make it a family thing. So Valentine's Day is all about creating fun things we can do together. So we have a big Valentine's Day dinner. That is such so, a sweet idea. Yes, and these are some fun ideas. I kind of did all of them for less than 10 bucks. And you really? get your kids involved. Yes. I love it. Okay, so let's get started. with an easy placemat. So I was looking on a, a, a department store, a high-end department store, and they had these great XO placemats. But they were too expensive. I'm like, come on, we can do this yeah. ourselves. So I actually got this paper upcycled from a print shop in town. How do you do that? It's leftover scraps that they have. And I went in and I said, hey, do you have any cardstock that you're getting rid of? And they said, yeah, and they gave me some. So you're free. Wow. That's yep. cool. And this is nice, thick, thick not poster. Stock. Yeah, it's yeah. it's thicker. You'd That's be surprised beautiful. what people will give you free if you ask for it. If okay. you're already getting rid of it. You gotta ask so for it. To make these little placemats, you can do them with your kids. You just take your Sharpie pen and you wanna go ahead and just make an X and an O, and an X and an O. That's it? Yeah, that's it. And that kind of gives you the little start of what you're gonna paint over. And that oh. Sharpie pen isn't just like a Sharpie marker. That's the marker. Sharpie paint pen that I used on those lamps oh, last time. Remember those? The Sharpie you paint You can get a big okay. pack of them at Walmart, but you could use a regular Sharpie or a pen or whatever. And then you just take your paintbrush just like this. Okay. And then you just come in and you just paint them. I mean, just regular paint. paint. Yep. Yeah, so you're tracing over them. Tracing over them, and you kind of do paint. the little wispy lines and stuff. But the kids love this, and they have so much fun. What kind of paint is that's, that? That's just um, okay. artist paint, but you could use any paint. So you could use a craft paint, craft or you could paint, use an anything. acrylic. Yep. We just whatever you something got. that dries easily. Yes, don't use oil paint. It'll be hand. a mess. Yeah. Don't go out and oh, buy a ton of stuff. This is so cute. Isn't that fun? And yeah. so then once you get that going, then it's time to do a little cupcake cover for your your um, plate on your table. I didn't even so realize just, cupcakes needed covers. Well, because they kind of get dried out and it's kind of fun. So this just take a little water glass, right? And then here, I'll take that from you. Okay. And then you just tie a bow around it, right? You just, this is actually a piece of ripped up red t-shirt that I had. Oh my word. Didn't need it. You do not need to go buy a ribbon. And then just make a bow. And then what do you do with that? Courtney, you just take it and set it on top of your cupcake that on the plate. That is so cute. That. And they could wake up. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, birthday mornings, kids can have donuts and cupcakes, you yep. know? So and you can cut them. Is Isn't that, that fun? You can use any kind of glass, a highball or, you know, I've been eating whatever. dry cupcakes my whole life. Yes. That Not is such anymore. a simple you know. little hack. Yeah, no, Not anymore. Or you could put them down the table with candles on top of them. You do all sorts of fun stuff. I love okay, it. Okay, so then a napkin. These you can buy a pack of five at Walmart. They're just those um, flower okay. sacks. Okay. Yeah, and then let your kids, like this one we have over here, I just wrote little love messages to my kids. You write why you love your family. And then Aww. you can set them all. And then you take the little, um, my Fruits. son actually made these at school. Yeah, Derek, you wanna try to do one of these? Yeah, you sure. You can take a piece of pipe cleaner and a few Fruit Loops. Oh, and then you yes. just leave them on there. And then you can wrap it around as your little holder on your napkin. Oh for my your gosh, kids. Fruit Loops. So I, I haven't know. had Fruit, fruit Loops, loops since like the 80s. the best. And they, I mean, those have been out for like an hour and they're oh, still. that smell is so <laughs> They're still fresh. Because we, we never were allowed to eat Fruit Loops no. as a kid. Yeah, they're so good. Well, now you can eat them all you want. You can have those. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna do some flowers on the table. Okay. Um, tuna can, right? Oh, Clean it out. Okay. And that's right. an oversized tuna can, it right? It is. It's the big it's one. Big it's one. the Costco tuna can. Okay. So then, Courtney, you just take these little clothes pins. Okay. And we're just going to clip them on there. That's it. That's all you do? All the way around. Oh, clip I see them on it. There. Okay, so yeah, this is the base. Yeah, it's kind of this cool bamboo base. feel. Yeah, you okay. can scoot them all together. And then I wait till I get it all done up. Okay. Super easy. Take my paint primer in one, which I love, and I spray paint them. And That's, then they and then you they put your look flowers just in. like this. And then Derek, I know how you love to take stuff from the um, Home Depot or wherever. You Excuse know, you're, me. You're big on that. Take take what? Take what? Like paint stir sticks. I don't take no. anything I don't Let's pay not for. Take anything. So <laughs> the little. Um, the paint samples. The paint samples. Take them. Well, quite them honestly, some. we all have them at yes, our house. Exactly. Oh, yeah. You cut little hearts in them and then tuck them in. Oh, you my You can gosh. tuck them in as little, another free way so to... So cute in the front. Yeah. Can I lift this up just so our viewers can see this a little better? Honestly, when you grabbed that tuna can and the clothespins, I wasn't sure I know, where like, you were going with it. I know, isn't it cute? But and look how well love, it turned out. Love to do it. I know. Again, a good teacher's gift, too. Yes. Teachers, don't forget them on their Valentine's Day. It They're is a angels. Good teacher gift. That it is awesome. Very cute. It's like its own little picket fence for the arrangement. And you can actually leave it raw and if you paint down the can below and it's kind of bamboo it actually looks kind of cool oh cool yeah. you could put some bamboo in there or cactus or something okay okay so the last one we have is this garland so a few years ago my friend marie showed me how to do this and you basically take coffee filters let's see we've got some right here and oh old school coffee filters. flatten them yeah. out courtney you want to flatten those out for okay. me okay you could take a little bit of grit dye or 
um, and just pour it in some warm water. Okay. And you can take food coloring, you can take coffee, whatever. Just pick something that will stain it. These stain very quickly. Okay. okay. And then you just take them, and you can actually take the whole stack. So that's but also that's the reason, Sarah, because it stains so easily, that's yes. the reason to be super careful yeah. with this one, right? Yep, it does stain easily. And so we'll put our little glove on. And so you drop just, them in in the stack? Yeah, you just take your whole stack and dip it in there. What? Yep. And then you can start pulling them, and then look, you can pull them out. And, and instantly, get, and they get yeah. And then like when you pull them out, yeah. When you pull them out, you want to pull up one side. I'll pull up the other. Squeeze them out. Really, okay. Ooh, ah, squeeze <laughs> them out really, really good. And then when they're all squeezed out, you flatten them out. We can take these off. Okay. Want to get you dying. Have you ever wanted a pink kitchen, folks? A pink kitchen. Well, now's this your is chance. the way to Super do it. Supervision for your kids. <laughs> then lay them flat on a cookie tray. 225, five minutes in the oven, and they turn into these crispy little guys. How cool and is then that? You can we put them on a needle. Okay. Right through the middle. Oh, and now you're yarn. just... yarn. Okay. Yeah, and you can do a few at a time, and you can kind of do them little different patterns and Am things. Am I pulling it through? Yeah, pull it all the way through. Just pull it through. Oh. All the way through. And then once you get... This is so about... Cute. This garland over here is about a pack and a half. And then once you get them all on there, Courtney, you just do this. Have your kids come in and scrunch them one at a time. That is so adorable. I, I am amazed. And look how great the finished yeah. product is, And then Sarah. when you're done, I had these hanging over my daughter's bed all while she was a little girl, just like in different... That patterns. looks so amazing. Oh, you I know, isn't you that consistently fun? amaze me every time you come in. To keep up with Sarah, just visit the Scene on Houston Life section of our website. Thanks so much. Yeah, Coffee thanks filters. For Coffee filters. Who knew? All right, folks. If you're expecting a tax refund this year, before you spend it, why not put that money to work for you? Coming up next, we're going to explain how you can do all that in the Shakiba Report. Don't go away. Welcome back. What started out as a very foggy morning turned into a very sticky day. Meteorologist Justin Stapleton, what's with the weather, dude? Hey, man. This, you know what? I just want to make sure that Courtney, her hair just looks like this. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's, it's working. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. I know, Mission right? Mission accomplished. You're going to need to powder up as well. Okay, here's what we've got. We've got a batch of rain that's slowly moving in this direction, but notice that it's just a lot of cloud cover out there now, and as we said, it is mucky. Look at this. Temperature is all running in the low to mid-70s. We're going to continue to keep that in those mid upper 70s for much of the day today and notice that the rain chances will stay at about 20 percent you like that good because it's going to be here for the next couple of days check it out as we get into tuesday wednesday thursday not much change 70s and 60s and eventually we finally get a little bit of winter back but not before friday and saturday sorry court mm, thanks know. for the bad news justin i stink i know it's monday have a great summer <laughs> don't ever change <laughs> Okay, so April is still a few months away, but it's never too early to start thinking or talking about tax season. I know. According to the IRS, taxpayers who file by late February get significantly larger refunds than those who file later. Part of that is because if you know you're getting a refund, you're more likely to file sooner. And what should you do with that extra money from your tax refund? Well, the man with all the answers, private wealth advisor with Ameriprise Financial, Trevor Shakiba, is in the house with a few options. That's so interesting to me that if you file earlier you're you're more likely to get a larger refund why is that yeah i don't know about that i think it's mainly because people that know they're gonna have a refund get it as soon as they possibly can yeah, yeah. um so, so maybe not necessarily the amount but they know they're getting a refund and that's why they're filing yeah i mean the, the other point there is a lot of business owners will wait and and file extensions and they usually have to pay in so i think the numbers are skewed there just my opinion. <laughs> okay, well, let's talk about the refund then. In the event you do get that refund, I know it's very tempting to go shopping with it, but a lot of people at this time of year, they're talking about credit card debt from the holidays, saving for the future. Where should that money actually be going? Yeah, th th that we're going to talk about that, and, and this is perfect timing because it's beginning of February, but the first point I want to make is, is, number one, make sure you're not getting too much back because if you are, you need to adjust your withholdings, and that's particularly important right now because of the new tax law changes. I'm not guaranteeing this, but the rates are lower this year, so it's potential, uh, it's, it's certainly possible that you might be getting a little bit more back. So just pay attention to that. And adjust accordingly. If that number has grown a little bit for you, go back and look at those uh, withholdings, basically. Yeah, absolutely. I think the tipping point is 3000 If you're getting more than that, 
then go back with uh, adjust those withholdings because you don't want to be getting your money back after giving it to Uncle Sam for six months or a year. And people easily do that just by taking another exemption typically on their taxes. Yeah, it's right? pretty pretty straightforward. Put it to work. You yeah. want to put it to work for you. Yeah. Okay, your second point. This is very interesting. We talk about the balance sheet and you say solidify that. Yeah, so this is the obvious ones. I put this in one category here. Solidify your balance sheet. But what I mean there is is pay down your high interest credit card debt and look high interest debt is the biggest impediment to building wealth so really tackle that and then don't forget about the cash reserve increase it or establish it because if you don't have that three to six months of expenses life happens you're going back to the credit cards more than likely exactly you talk about uh financial planning in an educational sense if you have young kids they're going to be going to college a 529 you recommend is a great way to go yeah this is a great spot to put a thousand dollars if you get some money back 529s are excellent education vehicles. It grows tax-free. Remember, it's education-specific, so you need to be aware of that. But 529s became even that much more valuable with the new tax law changes because it can be used for secondary education now, K through 12, whereas before it could only be used for college. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so you can, because that's just it. I mean, that kind of education for your child, sometimes kids Private are like, school. you know, you want to go to college or do you want to go to elementary school? So you have to really figure out wow. that, that dollar amount exactly. uh, for education. Sadly, that's where we are today. What about the Roth IRA? Yeah, I'm a huge proponent of Roth IRAs because again, it's tax-free. It goes in after tax and it compounds tax-free. Be careful, if you make too much money, you cannot uh, contribute to a Roth IRA. But here you have until April 15th of this year to get your contribution in for 2018. Great place for a little bit or all of that tax refund to go to. And Trevor, your last point actually surprises me a little bit because you say that it's okay to reward yourself once Pay in a while. Yourself, yeah. If you've met some of these financial goals, you say celebrate. Have some fun. I put this in for Courtney. Thank oh. you. <laughs> Trevor. Yeah, um, I was uh, I was actually telling my wife Christina about this, and she, she suggested that we change it to buy a purse. Um, but, I'm with Christina always. What I really mean here is celebrate the wins. Right. You can't just eat ramen and, and and only focus on credit card debt. And remember, I'm a financial planner, right? So, but but celebrate if you achieve one of those goals. It's okay to go out to dinner and have fun. It's about those small wins and keep moving forward. I mean, I celebrate with rum, and I happen to love it, so. I do, too. <laughs> Money <laughs> <saving>. Both. Do both. <laughs> Always great to see you. you and if you would like more information on financial planning or a complimentary consultation with Trevor and the Shakiba Group, you can call 281-724-9917, or go ahead and visit them online, shakibagroup.com. And still ahead on Houston Life, what's it like to work with artists like Beyonce, CeeLo Green, a Port Arthur native, has shared the stage with them for years, and now she wants to make her own mark as a singer. She'll join us right after that. Our next guest is a talented musician who has traveled the world with huge names in music, like, you know, only Beyonce and CeeLo Green. <laughs> but she's now focused on her own career as a solo artist. Brittany Washington was featured on the Eyes of Texas podcast. Brandon Walker followed her to the studio where she was working on her latest single. And guess what, folks? She joins us now in our studio. Brittany, great to have ah, you back on Houston Life. Thanks for having you, me, Because you've been on the show a few times. You probably recognize Brittany. So this love of music, this is a whole new side of you I wasn't even aware of. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I came here doing so many other things, like uh, modeling jackets and jewelry and handbags. Right. And now I'm like, oh, well, I want to come here and perform. You're like, I'm an artist as well. Where did the love of music come from for you? Well, uh... For me, it just it's just inside me. If you have my mom tell it when she was pregnant with me, she just tried to learn how to play piano every day and I just I came out playing. Oh. So it's like I just love the sounds and I just love you know, just the feeling of good music. I always say there's a Houston connection. You know, the big names always have yeah. big Houston stories. And you're from Port Arthur. Um, you, uh, you know, went Texas Southern, Prairie View, A&M. You played drums, bass guitar, guitar, keys. The list goes on and on and on. <laughs> um, how in the world did it feel like for you to walk into that Sugar Hill studio and know who's been there before you? Did you have that moment of just like, I need to take this in for a second? I just felt like, man, this is finally, this is where I'm supposed to be. I feel yeah. like I'm at home. I feel like I have a destiny. And seeing all those fabulous, talented people there 
knowing that they started there, I'm just like, I'm on the right track. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm so excited. And of course, we have to ask about your time with Beyonce. So you were her primary keyboardist and toured with her for seven years? Yeah, it, it was crazy. It was Whoa. always supposed to be she, one year. Like, do you text her? Like, is she on your phone? Oh, yeah. no. You know what? And I, she's too busy and I am not complaining about that. She has a lot of stuff going on right. and, you know, but she's a good person and, you know, I love her. So what much. an unbelievable break though. Yeah. I mean, that, you know, people that wait their my whole first, lives. First gig. But yeah. not just Beyonce though, this list is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. You have played the keys or drums for CeeLo Green, Mary J. Blige, yeah. Alicia Keys, Jennifer Hudson, Jennifer Lopez, Shakira, George Michael, Gladys Knight, Kanye West. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> girl, yeah. unbelievable. Oh. Well, yeah. we're so glad that given your busy schedule, you took time to stop and Thank see you. us. And uh, I hear you're gonna sing a little song for us, I huh? am, I am. And this is my new single um, entitled Unhappy. Um, it's one of my favorites and I'm so excited. And you describe it as kind of a soulful tune with a bit of a 90s yes, vibe to it? Yes, 90s vibe. Somebody, everybody can relate to it because everyone wants happiness. So people are like, why'd you name it unhappy? I'm just calling it out, calling unhappiness out. And I love it. Dealing with it. <laughs> okay, well, Brittani, we're gonna let you walk over, get set. Okay, so And uh, looking at video there of you recording in the Sugar Hill studio, we appreciate you coming in. And Brittani is here with Unhappy. It's just too emotional, so I gotta hit the door And I'm not gonna do it again Can't make me love again Something I felt before, I left you three months ago It's just too emotional, so I gotta hit the door Welcome back. You know, there's a hidden gem with 155 acres of trails and native habitat waiting for you to explore 
right in the city. I'm talking about the Houston Arboretum. Did you know that there is no admission fee and there has been some significant upgrades to the grounds recently? It's a perfect drop backdrop for an upcoming Valentine's Day date night event called Tapas on the Trails. <laughs> Christine, thanks so much for meeting me for a hike today. Thanks for having me. I absolutely love the Arboretum, and so much has changed over the last couple of years here. It really has. We've been going through a lot of really exciting changes, including all of this restoration that you can see behind me. We've got two really great new ponds that serve a bunch of functions, flood control, they help us when, if there's ever a drought, and they're great for wildlife. You know what's so great is coming through here, I mean, it just looks like it was planned, but having this water space right here is super important for you guys. It really is. I mean. It's so helpful for so many different reasons, and the wildlife really loves it. We've had ducks that come in, a bunch of new species of herons, so nature is sort of telling us we're on the right track. And you know what, the Arboretum was hit so hard, like Memorial Park, mm -hmm. um, after Ike, and of course the drought a few years ago. It was, and you know, that really taught us a lot about the environment, and we looked at it and realized there are a lot of trees and places where there's actually supposed to be grassland. And we learned a whole bunch from this and then put in grasslands. So we have prairie and savanna, about 15 acres now, and the wildlife is loving it. You know what's so great about the Arboretum is it's free. It's free for everyone. I bring my boys here all the time. It I is. love to just come here, hike a different trail every time I come here. But the important word here is free. Yep. But you guys are a nonprofit. Are. You gotta keep things moving. You're still in the process of renovating we are. and making the space better. So you need money. We do. <laughs> yes, as a nonprofit, um, we don't receive tax funding, which a lot of people do. We are on park land, but we actually manage it for the city. Um, so, like Memorial Park, we're a nonprofit that takes care of this land. And we also educate, so we have a dual mission of conservation and education, and all of the funding, all of our donations, all of our memberships, um, any grants that we get, all goes back into that. Okay, there's a really cool event coming up, which actually, this is part of the trail, it right? It is, yes. So we have Tapas on the Trail. It's a one night Valentine's Day event on February 9th. And it's a great way to get out in nature and do something fun that's a little different. You get your four course meal, you get your wine or your beer, but you also get to be out in nature and support nature more importantly. I love it. Okay, you're, we're gonna continue on this trail, but to a really cool spot that you're gonna take me now, right? We are, yes. Okay, let's go. So this is one of four field stations. It's the first one, our Savannah field station. And like I said before, how we don't have people who donate to us all the time, a lot of people never come into the building. And so this is one way that we really can reach folks and show them what this environment is all about. So we have great information about native species, species that maybe shouldn't be here, how we're restoring this land, and also how it's changed over time. And we try and reach all of the ages, so we have a great illustration for kiddos so they can look and see what wildlife might I see here, but also some higher level stuff for adults, so really everyone can get involved. And this is great too. I mean, I know that you guys have a program for bird watching mm -hmm. and, um, and butterflies and all of these wildflowers. I mean, it's such a great educational place and hard to believe. I mean, I know that we can hear the construction because that's part of what's going it on is, here. It is. But we are just. 610 is like an arm's throw away. It is, and it's really exciting, and so many people, we've been called a hidden gem for about four years. We're a 50 plus year old organization, and so many people don't even know we're here. But we're hoping that with all of these new changes, people will start to realize that we're a really great space in Houston, and that we're here for them. And Christine Mansfield with the Houston Arboretum is joining us now in studio. Thanks so much. I enjoyed our hike Same. and our chat. And for people that haven't been to the Arboretum in a while, we showed them some of the improvements, but you've got a laundry list of stuff that's brand new. We do. It's been really exciting. We have a ton of new savanna and prairie spaces. We have two new parking loops where people can come in and experience the Arboretum in a whole new way before they even get out of their car. Ponds, you name it, we've got it. And probably people's kids have been there on a field trip because that's such a great way. And I love describing the Arboretum truly as like an outdoor classroom. It is. Um, and it's such a great way to get back into nature. And that's really kind of your overall focus for the Arboretum, right? Yes, it is. Our mission is conservation and education. And so we marry the two with this educational piece for kiddos and for adults. 
I love it. Okay, so as we mentioned, you guys are a nonprofit organization and um, you need money. It's free. There's never an admission charge for this. And that's really the whole reason why you have this great fundraiser coming up to help you guys continue the renovation and the mission of the Arboretum. It is. We're a nonprofit and fundraisers like Tapas on the Trail are one of the ways that we really can continue this mission without, as you said, charging that admission fee. And there is a little bit of a change for the Arboretum that went into place at the beginning of the month, which is now um, a charge for parking. Parking. Don't get all up upward. You know the signs are there, but there's a there's a valid reason why you guys are charging to park there now. There is. So the great thing is all of the funding, all of the money from the parking comes back to us. So we use it directly into the land and to the educational programming, um, and the city is running it. So if you have questions about it, our website has more information about it. But all of the money goes back to support us. And it's really great because there's two entrances. There's one off the the West Loop and then one off of um, Memorial, mm -hmm. and it's very easy to get to. And I know so many. People People, we pique the interest because Tapas on the Trails, it's a really great date night to go ahead and just walk around, right? It is. It's beautiful. And you get, you know, your four course meal, you get wine and beer, and you get to enjoy being out in nature, which you, where else can you do that? I know. I love it. And it looks like uh, the weather is going to cooperate, maybe a little warm, and that's okay. It's going to happen on Saturday. There's the event details, but we're going to toss it over to Derek right now, who's standing by in the kitchen with a preview. Oh, my goodness. I am having such a good time already. I love that you guys brought beer. This is Chef Kevin Bryant with Cotton Culinary. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. I know you're working, so it's rude of me to do that. <laughs> uh, but you're creating some pretty sophisticated-looking dishes for us today, including this duck confit. Yeah, we're uh, doing an array of the entrees for the Arboretum. We're doing a tasting as you go through um, the trail. You're going to notice um, just different courses paired with great beer and wine. Um, it's going to be a great, wonderful evening What to enjoy. a cool idea that you get to nibble as you explore the trail. And, of course, the food pairings, you have beer and wine pairings, correct? Correct. So uh, the guests can come in and enjoy. They can pick one, either the beer or the wine. They can change it up kind of midway through. And there's, just enjoy the entire experience. So we spend a lot of time really pairing the food with the beverage itself. So it should be a great experience. And, well, and where else can you actually have an experience like this? Anywhere, I mean, let alone in Houston. Very, very cool idea. Let's talk a little bit about this salad that uh, you're going to demonstrate for us today. This looks rather fancy. Uh, the finished product is served in, what is this, like a little wooden bowl? Almost. Yeah, all, all the dishes that we're going to be using are biodegradable, so they're all made out of bamboo and just kind of fits in with, you know, what they're trying to do with the Arbor, yeah. Okay, and if someone wants to try to be fancy at home and create a salad like this, even if they don't have a wooden <laughs> bowl, you're going to show us the ingredients required to assemble it, yeah? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. So, so we have the mixed greens here. Okay. Um, we're going to have a champagne vinaigrette dressing. Um, just so go ahead and stuff that in there. Really stuff it in? Yeah, stuff it in there because you kind of want to perch the egg up on top so it's a beautiful presentation. Okay, gotcha. That looks pretty good. And you want to drizzle some uh, dressing over the top of that. And what is this, just a spring mix there? This is a spring mix. We have um, a local gardener here uh, creating some microgreens and stuff for the event. So they're being grown right now. So we're going to pick those up Friday. But just for purposes here, we're going to use a mixed green. Okay. Um, and then we're going to crack this egg here. So oh. go ahead and set that down. Uh oh. So this is a sous vide egg cooked at 145 degrees, so it's going to be custard like in center. Okay. Almost like a perfectly poached egg. How do I get it out? I mean, so I you're going to crack, crack it, but how do I crack it? it? Put it up. Oh. There you go. Now crack it into your hand. Into my hand? Into your hand. Oh dear. Let's drop that. Like this? There you go. And it kind of shake. There's a little bit extra there. You... And then you're going to perch that right here. Are you serious? Yeah. Go ahead and drop that in there. Oh, okay. This is definitely Fantastic. pretty fancy. You can peel this off. Peel off one yeah, of the glass. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, I should have kept it. No my problem. Plate. And then you're just and so adding. We're, yeah, we're just going to add some. Um, this is some torn baguettes. We got a little thyme, rosemary, olive oil on here. Like a homemade crouton there. Absolutely. And, and then little, we have uh, some bacon lardons here. So we're going to. So go these ahead are and skewer these. Big strips oh, of bacon. Yeah. I don't want to stab you with that thing. Oh dear. Oh, here we go. Okay. There you go. Leave it to the professional there folks. And so we're going to slide this on. And this is going to give you that salty component to the sweet dressing and finish it off. Oh, my gosh. Well done, here. And gentlemen. Courtney, Christine, what do you think? Great job. Doesn't it look so fancy? <laughs> and you guys do have tickets for the event, right? We do. We still have tickets on sale. Okay, so again, it's February 9th, which is Saturday from 5 to 9. $85 for members of the Arboretum, $95 for non-members, and that includes that four-course meal, beverages, and, of course, 
the nature experience. Mm -hmm. Great job, it my friend. Sounds lovely. Well, thank you so much. Kevin was my guide. Kevin, thank you. Christine, Absolutely. great to see you. And we'll and see all of you out at the Arboretum. Absolutely. We do have a link to learn more about the tapas and trails on the Houston Arboretum uh, on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Your salad's ready, Courtney. You just thank have to you. find it for you. Thank you. You look beautiful. Still ahead on Houston Life, how you could win a romantic getaway for two to the Texas Hill Country. Don't go away. Valentine's Day gift for your sweetheart. We are giving away a romantic trip to Fredericksburg, Texas. Well, the prize package includes a two-night stay for two at the cottages at Fredericksburg Herb Farm, a $75 gift certificate to both Cabernet Grill and August Ease. Plus a half-day Ruby Wine Tour with Majesty Wine Tours and $25 gift certificates to La Bergerie Chocolat and Das Peach House. Oh, I love the way you say that. Thank Head you. on over to our website, HoustonLife.tv, and look for the contest tab to enter. The winner will be announced on Wednesday, February 6th. And as always, you can find a complete set of rules and regulations on that site as well. In the meantime, coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, from happily married to it's complicated, we do have a Valentine's Day gift guide for every relationship status. And by the way, we're also celebrating the Chinese New Year with a dragon dance. You know, it's the year of the pig. The year of the pig. Yes. Well, that's very appropriate. And you know, I'm glad we're doing this Valentine's Day gift guide because seriously, what if you just start dating someone and you and don't know? And it's only been a couple weeks. Do you get them a gift? I Are know. they we're getting you one? We'll cover it all. We'll cover it all. Mm -hmm. We we need to put text on our little Valentine's Day oh, gift list. I hope he gives us a paw card. Maybe he will. I hope so. We love you, text man. Little text Mex is so great. If you guys haven't followed him yet on Instagram, you can find it by searching KPRC two text. He has all kinds of fun adventures around. The City. Have a great Monday. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Boy.